You had referenced the movie Thank You for Smoking yeah. um, in at least one of your videos. Mm -hmm. um, forgive me, I haven't seen it, but I want to make a point to see it, and I've heard from many people it's so excellent. Good. It looked amazing. Yeah. And there were so many Aaron things. Aaron Eckert's amazing. He's so charismatic in it. it, it in the, yeah, exactly. And how he said he has sort of this BA, and what was it? What was his exact saying? Public relations. Okay. Oh, a BA in bullshit, I think. Yes, yeah. and, and, right. And he's the guy that can talk the girl into anything kind of thing. Yeah. And so. What 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 in that movie? How would you break down the text, the subtext, and the context? And how much do you think that relates to the entertainment business, in the sense that they're trying to make it seem that smoking is okay? They're they're trying to portray that it's actually okay. That see what I think is interesting. I mean, ultimately, that's what I I love that movie because it's a polemic. It's it's presented as moral. It's it's about moral ambiguity. You know, it, um, there's this larger theme which is basically saying like. Um, culture, oh God, this is this is a really complex breakdown. It's a complex movie, but I fucking love it. It's uh -huh. one of my favorites. Um, but at its core, it's 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 about this guy who's trying to sell smoking, but what he's really trying to do. I mean, it's it's an exercise in rhetoric, but what he's really trying to do is say, I don't want people to determine my life for me. I want to take control of my own life, and I get to decide if I want throat cancer or not. Which is why at the very end, you're like, if my kid wants to smoke, I'm gonna light it up for him. Because it's not really about him saying, like, it's okay to smoke. What he's really, the whole story is this journey of him facing these, you know, largely, it's one of the themes that's really close to me, which is um, large tribal groups trying to impose their values on individuals and his individuality coming back and saying, no, fuck you, I'm gonna do what I wanna do. And you're kind of a villain for trying to impose that on other people. And, I, and it does it in such a clever, polemic way. And smoking is really just the pretext that gets us into it. Because it's something that you know, most people largely condemn. I don't smoke and it's not, it's not healthy. But at the same time, who are you to decide that for other people? And that's what that, that movie is, is asking about. But from a, from a great rhetorical position, mm -hmm. you know. So, would you say in some sense there's themes in terms of story, the entertainment industry, and how we view what's acceptable to watch? I think like what Rob Lowe plays the studio executive. I just watched yeah. a few clips. Oh, I mean, he's, he's just so great. Good. He's so great. I love that movie you know? so much. And the um, scene, he's like pitching himself. Yeah, I think that's such. A, he like he names two movies. Like that's how he sees the world is just. Yeah. What what you know blockbusters have sort of been hit. See, I don't know. I've I've been thinking about like, especially the entertainment industry and like a lot of a lot of people like especially on on your channel the interviews you guys are doing lots of discussion about, you know, what are the best rules for survival in the entertainment industry, and for me there's this metaphor that just kind of describes it simply which is that the entertainment industry is like a harbor and we have a constantly shifting tide. The water's going up and down and that tide is the amount of tension that people are willing to pay to things. Now, the industry does the best they can and we're talking, by industry specifically, we're talking about studios, distribu distributors, production companies. They're trying to understand which way the water's going, where it's moving. And most of the time, like, you know, as a writer, um, you're trying to swim in these choppy seas because you're, you're, you've built your craft and you're trying to dock in the harbor. Now, the studios have these docks and they're, they're the harbor, right? And um, because the water's constantly shifting, the best you can do is make your craft as adaptable to whatever the needs of the harbor are. So they're, they're looking for whatever is going to draw in the water as much as possible. This metaphor might break down a little bit if we get too specific. But, um, but the idea is basically everybody has to adapt to the shifting tide. And the studios especially, they have the most at stake. So they're looking for stories or writers, um, craftspersons that have built crafts that are adaptable to the shifting tides. And, you know, there's some studios that have built these massive mega harbors and your little dinghy comes up and it's just going to get beat up against the water because it'll be swallowed up because it, 
because the water is changing so much. Now, especially with the changing of like streaming and distribution models are radically shifting and indie film is shifting and you know people are making movies for less than a million dollars. Um, the harbor is dramatically different than it was five years ago, 10 years ago. So when it comes to the industry, all you're trying to do is find your path in. The best thing you can do is focus on developing your craft as much as possible, making it as adaptable as possible, which is really just the process of being able to delve into your metaphors and really work on being able to tell the stories that are compelling to other people. And that's, that's a, no one has the right answer to that. We're all just figuring that out. 